Investment bankers play a very important role in all aspect of financial market. There is no doubt about that. And again and again, the same thing is proved with numbers. But unfortunately, in the world of investment banking, there is a lot of negative things which are also happening. Some negative things are happening because of, I would say, technology. And some negative things are happening because of electrification. And some negative things are happening because of, I would say, the change in the outlook of investment banking. Many people spend thousands of dollars in doing a degree which is known as CFA, Certified Financial Analyst. And many people spend a huge amount of money in doing a degree which is known as FRM, Fall to Risk Management. All these degrees which they do will end up receiving nothing because these degrees are away from the practical knowledge. Now, today we got two news. Number one, Morgan Stanley, who on the one side is asking people to step down. If I remember correctly, that around 120 plus people are asked to step down by Morgan Stanley very recently. I don't know whether this 120 is the right number or the actual number is 1200. Because one important thing which the banking always have is that they fire 10 people and court one people. This is a universal fact about banking. Even if you say in 2000 and say 1990s, this fact remains intact. So they fire one people, fire 10 people and save one people. But in hiring, they hire one people and say we hire one people. This is how they do. Morgan Stanley paid around 13, million, 13 billion dollars, bought a broker which is known as E-Trade. I consider it as one of the top-notch FX, FX deal for the 2020, specifically when we are standing around 21st February 2020 and second month is yet to pass. The moral of the story is same. Morgan Stanley entering into this domain because Morgan Stanley feel that they wanted to create an alternate source of revenue. Apart from their investment banking and FICC desk, they wanted to enter into the brokership. But having said that, I am not really very skeptical about this deal. And neither I skeptical nor I am in the favor of the deal. Because Vanguard PIMCO and specifically Vanguard. Vanguard is entering almost every sphere of the finance. Like I was reading one of the interviews by Vanguard. Vanguard, by the way, those who do not know, Vanguard is the largest mutual fund of the globe. If you get some time, you visit the website of the Vanguard, you will get a lot of knowledge. But how much you understand out of their website, that is up to you. But Vanguard is one of the, one of the I would say, knowledgeable websites we have. But yes, the content is of higher quality. So don't expect that it is under the reach of everybody. Just like our YouTube videos. We don't make YouTube videos to get 1 million views, 10,000 likes. We make YouTube videos for class, not for the mass. That's it. So Vanguard is entering into the brokerage and in fact Charles Schwab who clearly said that in all broking they would be charging zero fees. Till what extent such kind of acquisitions paying 13 billion dollars from your pocket and at a time when the market is very volatile, the income level is falling, the fees in the investment banking reduced to considerable high, I will touch this point again. Spending 13 billion dollar at that point of time buying a E-Trade is, 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 I don't think it's a right strategy. More important, importantly, what would happen to the thousands of people, those who are working in the E-Trade? They bought it today, so we have no information. We do not have any contract in the public domain. We have no information, so we don't know what would happen. But considering the history of American buyouts, it suggests that whenever in one big American company and specifically from a financial sector buy another big company in the financial sector, then layoff is bound to happen. Because there would be one chief executive officer of the combined entity. E-Trade e would definitely have its own e chief executive officer. He needs to step down. CFO need to step down. The board need to step down. 
the traders of Morgan Stanley will take over the role of the traders of E-Trade. So definitely job losses would happen, but till what extent we do not know. So this is one phase of investment banking when the wholesale investment bank Morgan Stanley is entering into the brokerage business, apart from their well-established business of investment banking and FICC desk. We need to see how it works. Second phase of investment banking is this, which we got to know today. Because you know, we are a company of numbers. We never make videos until we have the data. So whenever we have the data, we make the video. You know, in 2017, yes, in 2015, around $2 trillion is the global corporate bond issuance. In 2016, it's around 2.3 trillion. In 2017, it's around uh, what? 2.4. It's 2019. In 2018, it's little long, like you know, I would say 2 trillion. And 2019, we got another 2.4. So in 18. We got 2 trillion. In 17, we got 2.4. In 16, we got 2.2. And in 15, we got around 2, which means, which effectively means that 2 plus 2.2, 4.2 plus, uh, how much is this? This is 2.2 plus 2 plus 2.4. In the last five years, around $12 trillion worth of bonds being issued across the globe. $12 trillion. Right? And that's I'm not saying, that is the data I say. In the last five years. If I take up from 2009, then you add at least another $10 trillion. So in the last 10 years, around 22 trillion worth of bonds is being raised across the globe precisely plus minus half trillion here there so in the last 10 years from 2009 till 2019 around 22 trillion dollar worth of bond is being raised across the globe which is more than the gdp of the united states and this is bonds by the way this is bonds treasury bill is outside the scope and this is corporate bond so in the last, precisely speaking, in 2009 to 2019, around $22 trillion worth of corporate bonds being raised across the globe. How about treasury securities, treasury notes, treasury bonds, mortgage-backed securities, commercial mortgage-backed securities, and all these, we don't know because we do not have the data. In all these issuances, investment bankers who are also doing one kind of work, which is known as primary dealers, Every investment banker of the globe, either it is Goldman, JP Morgan, HSBC, Deutsche, Standard Chartered, Barclays, anyone, they have their one unit which is known as primary dealer. This primary dealer actively come and take up that position. This primary dealer is a part and parcel of FICC, which is Fixed Income Currency and Commodities and they do such kind of trading. Now this all 22 trillion dollars something money is is to be done by the primary dealer of the various banks across the globe which definitely includes goldman jp hsbc standard chartered ubs barclays and all this is second phase that that the primary dealer component of the investment banking is very strong and would continue to be strong because the data suggests that in 2020 and 21 the issuances would definitely be at least intact or grow because market do not have a liquidity. If market do not have a liquidity, then people are raising. Example, India. I was reading one of the newspaper and I got to know that around 8 billion plus money is being raised by Indian companies only in January. And around 11, 11 and half billion, which is 50% of, around 50% of total issuance of 2019. So around 45 to 50%, which was around 22 billion dollar, of the total issuance of 2019 
around 11 billion which is around 11 to 12 50 percent of that is being raised only in the first month first two months of 2020 what about the rest 10 months you neither you know nor i know so here the investment banker play a very active role there is no doubt about that now comes the third look of investment banking which is the mnas merger and acquisitions when one company buy and one company sell just like today morgan stanley bought uh, e trade but this is not considered as an income for morgan stanley because morgan stanley is an investment banker himself it is just like i would say mr bill gates wanted to use the cloud service of one of the companies of microsoft so mr bill gates will definitely not go and buy amazon he will buy microsoft cloud azure or alternatively google some subsidiary of google wanted to use the cloud then they will take google cloud you know or amazon is expanding amazon prime they need more cloud service so they take aws of amazon they will not take microsoft service so similarly this morgan stanley bought of e trade will not end as a income for another investment banker because morgan stanley himself is a well known investment banker but we got some data in 2014 around 2.8 trillion dollars worth of mna merger and acquisitions happen note this carefully from 2019 onwards to 2019 roughly in the range of 2 to 2 and 1/2 trillion dollar worth of bond issuance happen but in 2006 and 15 around 3.4 trillion worth of mna happens 2016 this is 2.9 trillion 2017 it is 2.7 trillion 2018 it is 3.1 trillion and 2019 it is 2.7 trillion which means the range is range is somewhere 2.7 to 3.5 now whenever such big acquisitions happen it means the consolidation consolidation is happening so all e trade customers is now morgan stanley customer till what extent morgan stanley would be able to maintain a hold on them we don't know it is just like uber eats bought up by zomato in a stock deal till what extent zomato would be able to maintain uber eats we really do not know because this is something we do not know having said that till what extent out of this mna the consolidation will 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 happen we don't know but one thing we know that the world is moving towards consolidation this is a hard fact which we need to acknowledge when rather than having multiple companies who are offering almost homogeneous kind of product we have few companies who are offering almost similar kind of product which is either monopoly or duopoly similar kind of situation to be honest so this is one thing so this investment banking shape is seriously taking up there is no doubt about that but it is going technological wise and electrification there is a big difference between electrification and technology now let me answer this i don't know how many people really ever get time to read the annual reports of the big investment bank and i don't want to quote that investment bank but you can guess they are my favorites right they published their annual report this year which in us parlance known as 10k in this annual report 10k they clearly mention that very very specifically they mentioned is that due to the electrification of the investment banking market the bidder spread which used to be quoted manually now it is electrified so example if today when people used to do the deal they used to do otc trading on the phone now it is electrification which is fx all trade web bloomberg emsx and various kind of platforms so the bidder spread component is reducing since bidder spread component is reducing this investment bank clearly mentioned in their annual report which in american parlance is known as 10k very clearly that since the decrease of the bidder spread or they used a technical word which is known as compression since the compression of the bidder spread the income in the investment banking may fall over the period of the time rather they used a little diplomatic word they said that there would be challenging to maintain that level of fee income in the upcoming time and i don't think this is wrong this statement that there would be a, that it would be challenging to maintain that income level over a period of the time is applicable to all investment banker whether it is goldman jp hsbc standard chartered barclays or you name them 
So one side, these acquisitions happening where investment banking are earning very small money. I gave you an example of uh, Alibaba and uh, you know Aramco. Alibaba paid around around less than 33 million dollars to 17 banks, while Aramco paid 90 million dollars. Aramco is 0.35 percent of the fees, while Alibaba it's not even do not need to talk about the fees Alibaba paid. I think it is penny what what Alibaba paid. So don't go by the numbers, go by the fees. The fees collected by the investment bank is very less, which is pushing investment bank to move towards technology. You cannot have a huge team to get this done. Now comes the something which is happening in the investment bank. I don't know it is a stupidity, it is a duty, it is a duosity. How would I term this? I don't know, but I have no word. Now today I got to know this. US based prime pri private equity investor Blackstone has emerged as a front winner to buy the South City Mall, one of the largest mall in the eastern India. Mall? Private equity players in India are getting aggressive at that level whereby they are even buying they are even buying malls. Come on. And the deals are like that. In 2015, Blackstone along with Alpha One bought, uh, sorry, Blackstone bought a mall known as Alpha One in Amritsar and Ahmedabad around 800 crores. In 2016, GIC, which is a sovereign wealth fund of government of Singapore, bought a Vivana mall around paying 1000 crores. In 2017, Blackstone bought Treasure Iceland which is indoor around 1200 crores while 2016 again it is Blackstone he bought Seawood's Grand Central Mall Navi Mumbai somewhere around 1450 crores and recently they bought Alenta Mall in Chandigarh it is around 2200 crores and now another deal of 2000 crores so if I add around Seven to eight thousand crore is being spent in the last five year in the last four years only on the malls. How can you make money on a mall? That is idiotcy. That is completely idiocity. When the whole globe is going electronic, when the real estate players, when the e-commerce companies are actually coming e-commerce. When the back end of the e-commerce is going robotics, when the big malls, even in Singapore, even in US are closing stores, not one, two, hundreds of stores at one go. How effective is the Blackstone that out of six deals, five deals are done by Blackstone. And this time, I do not want you to use this word, but I'm forced to that GIC again played a role, which is a dozen investors, including Blackstone, Zender and GIC, have put their bids for the mall, mirroring about 1 million square feet. The sources said that expected to be around 2000 crores. Come on, it's the Singapore government on the one side, which they claim that the economy is growing by point in the 2017 grew by 0.7%. And today, Australia and New Zealand Bank gave a forecast of 0.4%. I really don't think this is the Singapore of 2008 which used to grow more than 10%. In 2020, the economy will grow by 0.4% which means no growth flat, nothing, there is no growth and government himself expect a possibility of contraction of half a percent. You are one side facing a recession, in fact depression and you are hereby buying a mall. The sovereign wealth fund of, China, of government of Singapore is buying a mall and paying not less than Paying what? 1000 crores. It's a big sum boss. Anyways, so this is another phase of private equity and another phase of investment banking. The third come which I got today and in fact that make me little worrisome. Which is that Nomura. And by the way Nomura is my favorite investment bank after Goldman. So Nomura is slowly slowly coming onto the track as an investment bank and we got the data. 
So profit before tax for Nomura, which excludes the Japanese business, their home business. In 2015, Nomura Investment Bank, basically it's an investment bank in revenue, and everything is in Japanese yen. Nomura earned 34.6 billion Japanese yen. Not bad. 2016, they earned around 20 billion Japanese yen. 2017, they earned about 24 billion Japanese yen. 2018, they got another around 23 billion Japanese yen. 2019, 5 billion Japanese yen. And 2020, till now, they made it wonder by 23.1 billion Japanese yen. So Nomura is slowly, slowly coming onto the track. And Nomura is once again making their picks and making their positions in the world of investment banking. So the world of investment banking is changing very fast. When on the one side we have people like Morgan Stanley who are coming and buying E-Trade. On the one side around 2 trillion, 2 trillion worth of corporate bond issuance is happening almost every year. In some year plus plus half trillion, in some year less half trillion, around 2 trillion. Every year around two, between 2.5 to 3.5 trillion worth of global m and is happening, which is moving towards consolidation, there is no doubt about that. More importantly, now private equity, venture capitalists and the investment banking is moving rather than big deals, they are moving towards buying of malls. This is the data. And Nomura who almost lost their position in the world of investment banking, they are coming back. I would like to read this paragraph. Nomura 2008 purchase of Lehman Asset in Asia swelled cost as it took on bankers. For global firms in this region, it can be harder to make money for investment banking than in Europe and America because of the lower fees and the high cost of running operations in the multiple countries. Nomura has shifted focus in several nations since taking the role four years ago. In India, he has increased the emphasis on the financing and the capital market business rather than merger advice because many companies there and need to access fund for growth and in Australia, they build a sponsor business from scratch, helping private equity fund execute the deals. So well wishes for Nomura that we have another player in the market. To cut the long discussion short, investment banking business is shaping up. Electrification is happening, technology is shaping up, job cuts are happening, investment banks are buying stock broking for us, sorry, the broking firms to create an alternate source of revenue, Morgan Stanley. Till what extent this would be helpful, I don't know, at least today. If this cycle would continue, we have interesting trends in investment banking another two to three years. But having said that, investment banking need those people, those who are technically competent, those who understand the product and those who can create the product. With this, we thank you very much. This was our prospect on investment banking and we wish that in 2020, investment banking will create a lot of products for us. And Treasury Consulting also entering into investment banking and our investment bank will start in June. And as and when it will start, the announcement will come in the public domain. You know my mobile number, which is plus 91-9899242978. You know our, our my alternate number, plus 91-9818485155. Do not forget that we have many WhatsApp groups wherein if, if you are a person who wanted to learn something new you have a fire, you feel that the current system around you is pathetic, you feel that you need to learn something new, you need uh, to understand the new thing, then based upon your profile, you are always welcome. You can PM me on my WhatsApp numbers, both are my WhatsApp numbers. I repeat 9818485155, 9818485155. Both are my WhatsApp numbers, you can WhatsApp me. We also run our daily FX report, which is complimentary as at least in 2020. You are most welcome there. You are welcome to visit our hedge fund academy. And there is a hell lot of action. This we definitely thank you very much. And we continue to present a lot of perspective. I think that 2020 is a challenging year. No doubt about that. Chinese coronavirus make it more challenging. 
But having said that, if in 2020 we would be able to make something different, like I said many times in our many videos that those who stay in another two to three years, maybe limited profit, maybe small companies, medium companies, but if those who stay in another two to three years, they will stay for another 20-25 years. That's for sure. Have a good time.